Hello and welcome to today's video on Microsoft Hyper-V core installation and basic setup. So today we're going to be walking you through Microsoft Hyper-V Server 2012 R2 which will be installed as a server core by default and the video is tailored for somebody that is brand new to Hyper-V or that hasn't installed the server core version of Hyper-V before. So I've just booted my server here with the Hyper-V 2012 R2 DVD and for me I'm just going to change this time format to English Australia and I'll click next and just install now here I'll accept the license agreement and click next and here I'll click custom install the newer version of Hyper-V server only advanced here it's located my local hard drive which has got 40 gig available and we have down here some you would say advanced settings but it's not really that advanced uh, clicking new will partition the, the hard drive for, and you can select a size uh, other than the maximum of 40 gig uh, followed by then formatting the, the hard drive. Windows will also allocate about a 350 meg uh, system partition as well. Uh, if we click next here it's just going to use the maximum amount of space that it can for that local drive. So I don't want to change the size of my primary drive. I'm happy for it to take the whole 40 gig. So here I'll just let it do its thing and click next. And now we see our Hyper-V server being installed. One thing installing the Hyper-V server version as opposed to installing Windows 2012 R2 and then installing the role is that there's no license key for uh, Hyper-V uh, being installed as a server core version. So if you would like to use the Hyper-V role with the GUI version of Windows 2012 R2, you would need to purchase a license and then go through and add the role for Hyper-V. Adding in the Hyper-V role also installs the Hyper-V management tools, which you will see shortly after this installation. Once our server restarts and boots up, you will see we're very limited in GUI screens and GUI configuration. Most of it will be done via CLI or via PowerShell. Okay, so here we are at the screen asking us to change the administrator password. So I'll just enter in my new password. My password has been changed, so I'll click OK. So if you haven't ran a server core version of uh, Windows before, this is pretty much all you're going to see. So very limited in the GUI use. We've got a couple of options here in our CLI, or we can also jump into command prompt over here and launch PowerShell and use some PowerShell commands. So first up, what we're going to do is we're going to change our computer name. So I will press option number two and give my computer name the name of HV1 for Hyper-V1. Press enter. It will ask me to restart my computer. So I will uh, restart it. Okay, we'll sign in again. We're back at the same CLI screen. So now what I'd like to do is just uh, set up my network settings, my IP addressing. So I'll press option 8. I will select the adapter 11. We will set the network adapter address. Set it for static. And my new IP address 192.168.1.111. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. And my default gateway will be 1.1. I'll set a DNS server. 1.101. So this will be my Active Directory DNS server. Uh, I don't have an alternate DNS server, so I'll leave that blank. I'll just press Enter here. And we'll return to the main menu by pressing Option 4. Press Option 9 and just check on the date and time. 
So looking at my local PC and my Hyper-V PC, the date and time looks correct here. Uh, you can also set up additional clocks um, and an internet time service as well. So click OK there. And now I'll join my Hyper-V host to my Active Directory domain. So I'll press Option 1. I'll select D for domain. And the name of my domain is vmlab.local. I'll enter in my user account that has permissions to be able to join a server to the domain, which is administrator. And I'll type my password. It asks me if I'd like to change the computer name before restarting the computer. I'll select no, as we've already changed it. And we must restart the computer to apply the settings. So let's restart again. And now log in with my domain account. So I'll select other user. And I'll log in as administrator. And our Hyper-V host is pretty much ready to go. You might also want to change the Windows update settings and download and install the latest updates as well uh, before going into production. But in the lab here and for this demonstration, uh, we're going to skip those two steps just to save on some time. And what I'm going to do now is just switch over to a management host that I've prepared earlier. And this is also a Windows 2012 R2. As you can see, it's the GUI version. And in R2, as you can see down the bottom left-hand corner, we have the Start button, which takes us to this screen. So what I want to do here is install the Hyper-V GUI management tools. The other way to manage it is by using PowerShell as well. So what we're going to do here is going to click on Manage and Add Roles and Features. I'll click Next on the first screen, Next on the second screen. This is the server that I wish to add my roles onto, so I'll click Next here. And I'll just scroll down. You can see here you've got the Hyper-V role, but we actually don't want to install the Hyper-V role on this server. We want to install a feature. So I want to click Next. And here we'll scroll down to Remote Server Administration Tools. And we'll expand Role Administration Tools and Hyper-V Management Tools. So we'll click on that. That's the feature that we want to install. And we'll click Next. It'll ask us if we want to confirm that these are the settings we would like to install. So I will click install. The installation has succeeded. So I'm going to click on close. And I'll just minimize this. So now we'll click on start, administrative tools, and Hyper-V manager. Now on the right hand side here, we're going to click connect to server. And for the server name, we'll type in hv1, which is the name of our Hyper-V server core. I'll click OK. And so now we've made our connection successfully to our hv1 host. So next up, before we create our virtual machine, we want to go into Virtual Switch Manager. And what I'm going to do is create an internal private network here. So I'll click on Create Virtual Switch. And I'll just name this internal one. If I was creating an external network and I wanted the VM to have internet access for example, I would click external network here and I would select my network adapter that's facing externally. But for this demo we're just going to create an internal network. There'll be no VLAN ID associated with it. So we'll click apply and OK. And I'll right click on my host. I'll go new virtual machine and we'll begin the new virtual machine wizard here. I'll click Next. I'll give my virtual machine a name, Win2012. I'll click Next. Here I'll specify a generation of virtual machine that I'd like to use. So as you can see here, Generation 1 provides the same virtual hardware to the virtual machines as in previous versions of Hyper-V, whereas Generation 2 provides newer virtual hardware which allows for Secure Boot, SCSI Boot, and Pixie Boot using a standard network adapter. But an important note, Guest operating systems must be running at least Windows Server 2012 or 64-bit versions of Windows 8. So I'm going to select Generation 2 and I'll click Next. 
For startup memory, I'm going to type in here 1024 and I'll tick the selection to use dynamic memory for this virtual machine. We'll click next. In networking, we'll drop down and we'll select our internal network that we created previously. So this is going to be a private LAN. It's not going to have any external network access at all. And we'll click next. Now on my host, I've only have a C drive allocated. In a normal production, you would have another drive allocated or maybe a shared storage on a SAN. Later on, I want to do a video on Windows 2012 R2 uh, connecting to a NetApp SAN using SMB3. So stay tuned for that video. But for now, in my lab, I only have the one drive. So I'm going to be installing my virtual disk onto the C drive of the Hyper-V core. So we're going to give it 20 gig. And I'll just select install an operating system later. Click next and finish. And here under virtual machines, we've got our first virtual machine created. So the last bit of hardware we want to add into our virtual machine before we actually power it up is our CD-ROM drive. So if I right click on my virtual machine and click on settings and I click SCSI controller, highlight DVD drive and click add and down here I'll select image file and I'll click browse. So now I'm browsing the Hyper-V host, not the server that I'm currently on. So I'll double click on C drive and I've created an images folder and in here I've placed the 2012 R2 ISO file. So I'll select that and I'll click open and that will mount that ISO file to the DVD drive here. In the firmware section and on the right hand side we want to move the DVD drive up to the top followed by hard drive as the second and then network as the third. So I'll click OK here and now we can start our virtual machine. And here we go, we have our Windows 2012 beginning our installation. So I'm going to wrap up this video here. I hope it gives you a starting point to running Windows 2012 R2 Hyper-V Core Edition. And I'll be creating a few more Hyper-V videos in the next few weeks. So stay tuned or subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll be notified as soon as they are uploaded. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in our next video.